No, not yet. I'm going live right now. Got it. Pull it up on mine too. This is gonna do it on my phone. Should be live, maybe. Yeah, it's saying I'm live now. Hello, everybody. I think this might take a little while to get up and rolling, but we have Jessica here uh, with Jessica Ray Interior. She's going to join us. Um, we appreciate you jumping on. Um, so Jessica uh, does a lot. Uh, she can tell you a little bit about herself, um, but staging, uh, home remodeling, she flips homes and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, Jessica, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and your business. Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Jessica. I own Jessica Ray Interiors. I do a little bit of everything related to home. So I stage homes, I flip homes, I do private renos, um, anything from just decorating, um, pretty much anything to do with the home besides the actual like construction part. Love it. Right. On your girl. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been doing this for about four years full time. Before that, I was a stylist for Better Homes and Gardens and TV production companies around town and um, kind of realized the hours weren't favorable. They're long set days. Yeah. And one of my um, realtor friends put a bug in my ear. She's like, have you ever thought about home staging? And I was like, I mean, I've seen it on TV. Um, I don't, I get it, but I don't get it. Like how, what happens with the furniture? Cause I was so used to buying and returning all the time. Like I would buy it and return <clears throat> it. Um, and at some point I was like, okay, well she had this listing and I just kind of ran with it and, you know, it was a darker home put in, um, new light rugs, pillows, and um, it sold with multiple or went under contract with multiple offers. And she um, is a pretty well-known realtor in town. Her name's Rochelle Burnett. And kind of from there, she just kind of started passing my card around. And then all of a sudden I had a warehouse. So I owe her. Yeah. Um, she's awesome. kind of a fairy godmother in this business. Uh -huh. um, but she's kind of, I said, I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do my best and make it work. And it was like a lot of learning on the job. And, you know, staging was around four years ago, but it was um, prevalent as it is now. So I didn't really have like a mentor to like look and ask, like, how do you do this? And some people, what do you do? What yeah, do, we do now? Get the stuff there and like, where do you keep it? And where do you like, how do you do contracts? And, so I literally kind of just, yeah, faked it time, made it, acted like I know what I was doing and here I am now. So um, I love awesome. it. Yeah, I know you've been doing great. I know a lot of agents who use, use you and recommend you to clients and stuff. And uh, I know I've, I recommend you as much as I can to different sellers out there. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, we appreciate you being on here today. Um, so those that are watching, we really appreciate you jumping on to watch this. This is our third webinar we've done since this whole COVID thing has taken off. Um, we did one on the home buying process. We did one, what was the last one? Oh, uh, home renovations. Um, and then this one, just wanted to hit on the selling process and how that looks virtually. Um, and then Jessica will chime in and talk about staging, what you can do to get your home ready. Um, just tips, tricks to make it stand out above your competition in that fashion. So <clears throat> um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen here. We are, and those of you that are watching, since I'm sharing my screen, I can't have Facebook up on the live. We definitely encourage you to ask any questions that you might have on this. Hopefully we're catching you on your lunch break, which we're trying this one at a different time. We've done a couple different, we did one at like four and then we tried one at seven now we're trying one at noon so we'll see what works for people um and also i just moved into a new office and so i'm sorry that i'm trying to figure out lighting in this place but um and i'm not really here much anymore so anyway um so yeah we want to start we'll, we're just going to start with the so the virtual home selling process and we're going to go over kind of what we'll talk about um today 
how things are selling right now. Um, how are we still selling homes? How are we able to still sell homes? Um, what's that look like to you as a seller? And what can you be doing during this time to get you ready um, to sell after this is all over or in the upcoming months or even in the upcoming years? And so this first slide here just hits on, yeah, so March 28th, the governor actually, or the Homeland Security actually um, deemed real estate as an essential service, which it very much is. Some people just choose to move um, and sell and buy. Other people have to move, whether they lose a job, they um, get a new job, they have to relocate, um, they're having a child and they're going to be packed in their house, they can't get out anymore. Um, and so we, um, so yeah, everything is still up and running on that standpoint. Obviously, we're taking extreme precautions as far as when we are letting people go through your home. Um, we definitely recommend gloves, uh, hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, uh, masks, anything like that to help protect everybody in there. Um, so yeah, once again, what we're going to cover on today, how to sell your home virtually. Um, so the, everywhere from the virtual consultation, uh, virtual staging, uh, electronic sign listing docs, digital marketing, um, virtual open houses, home inspection, and then closing virtually on those. And so the first step is just a virtual consultation. So usually what we do from a listing presentation stand, side of things, somebody's going to call me, um, get referrals or whatnot. They're going to call and say, hey, Ethan, we'd love to sell our house. We're thinking of selling our house. We'd love to have you come out and give us a value on your home. What we need to do to get ready um, to sell. And so what we do and now is we can actually set that up virtually. So we can be on Zoom here or on uh, FaceTime, anything like that. And you can actually give me a tour throughout your home virtually. I can give recommendations and stuff going that route. Um, I always suggest being able to see homes before just throwing out values because otherwise we just have the assessor site to go off of, which is really hard to determine uh, a value just based off that because it's usually not correct. And usually it doesn't have, I mean, I can't tell any of the interior, um, what condition the interior is in or anything like that. And a lot of times the photo on the outside, if you've done updating and stuff, it's hard to get, um, it's hard to get a value based off of that as well. But so anyway, virtual consultations, we are doing those. Um, also, if you absolutely want me to come into your house, uh, I can do that as well. Um, obviously we'll take precautions that way. Keep safe distance and um, yeah use our use common sense and that's um, aspect um, the next one or yeah so then um, we kind of already talked about that <clears throat> so what I also do um, in that situation too is I will go actually take a tour of your home uh, virtually or from the a neighborhood tour and so I can go obviously drive around the other neighborhoods look at your home from the outside look at your neighbors and do uh, help me get a good market analysis based off of that too in your neighborhood. Um, and then really the keys to selling your home virtually, the biggest thing here is gonna be, um, yeah, like I said, the virtual tour of your home, we wanna do that. Um, we need accurate and detailed listing information. And so when we do the virtual um, presentations, I need as much information as I can gather um, if I'm not there, cause it's gonna be easier if I am there without being there, the more information I have, the better as far as what kind of updates you've done, what do you plan to do? Uh, what do you, um, if you, I don't even know, appliances from granite to new flooring to, uh, if you just painted, all that kind of stuff is good. Um, and then one of the biggest things is just high quality listing photos. So we are still, obviously, we still have to have a listing um, agent, or not a listing agent, sorry, I'm rambling now. <laughs> um, we still have to have a photographer come in and into your home to shoot photos. So right now, more than ever, um, photos are very, very important when selling your home. Um, we have always done professional photos ever since I've been in the business, just because I believe that um, you as a seller deserve professional photos because even before now, I mean, 95 to 97% of home buyers start their search online. <clears throat> and right now it's probably 100%. And so we need to make sure that your home is standing out above your competition. And so we do professional photos on that. We do drone photos. Um, and then right now we're actually doing um, even 3D tours. Um, we're doing virtual tours, all that stuff. We're setting up for our sellers to make sure that people can uh, tour your home, even from sitting on their couch at home, which is important for you. Um, 
then yeah, agent led video chat. And then most important, just making sure your listing photos stand out, which we already um, kind of discussed. But that is where Jessica comes in. I'm gonna go back here real quick. So these things um, we're gonna hit on kind of throughout the presentation um, here. The first part here, the key to selling your home virtually. And then um, as we go throughout, we're gonna go through some market data, of what's going on in the marketplace. Um, and then, yeah, what you need to be doing now to prepare yourself for later down the road, what you need to be doing now if you plan to list your home in a week. And so um, on that note, uh, Jessica, we're gonna pass it off to you. She's gonna talk about just, yeah, ways to make your home stand out above the competition when right now more than ever, uh, which her and I had a conversation earlier today. Um, it's super important to make sure that people can, I mean, staging and presentation of your home from an online standpoint, from a photo standpoint is very, very important right now. So um, yeah, Jessica, we'll let you take it over. And um, we'd love to hear your thoughts about you know, what's going on right now, uh, what people can be doing, uh, what the, some trends are that you're seeing and stuff like that. Yeah, so basically, um staging consults and like occupied stages and vacant stations all kind of have different effects and um, every home I walk into, I'm not really sure what I'm walking into. It's just, I walk in, give recommendations based on what will get the most return on their investment and kind of what's feasible for that family. So obviously in occupied stages, when there's kids involved and teenagers, it's a little bit different than like maybe someone that um, is a little older that their kids um, are not living with them anymore. So I'm obviously always tell, tell someone that with their with a two and three year old that they can't have any toys in their house. Yeah. It's probably right. unrealistic. Right. If someone came into my house, like I have a ten month old and a two year old, and told me I had to get rid of my toys, I'd be like, "You're crazy." Yeah. So um, and like with that being said, you know, staging is much different than decorating. I love color personally. Um, also personally, we tend to have bigger furniture, more furniture than necessary, um, kind of darker things because they're more comfortable. And so when I walk into a home, the first thing I want to do is like, what can we do to lighten the load? Um, basically, I tell people, so, you know, some people are like, oh, you're having to stage her over. Like, she's probably going to hate everything I have. And that's not necessarily true. Um, there's a lot of different ways to kind of look at what's possible and what's not possible. So if the color red, I might come into your house and be like, oh, I hate to say this, but red's kind of the worst color to have in your house um, because it just doesn't photograph very well. So we keep talking about photography and how important it is. And there's three colors that just aren't the best. And that's reds, yellows, and oranges. Um, in real estate photography, every photo is so wide angled and they're trying to get as much in a photo to show the size of the room. And so people get overwhelmed, even in photography, about the amount of color and the amount of stuff in a listing photo you kind of get caught up in it. So my job when I walk in is like, okay, like maybe if they have one red wall, can we paint this one accent wall? Um, if they decorate with all red pillows, can we get rid of the red pillows and replace them with something neutral? Um, if they have um, a lot of little things, like some people love decorating, some people love art, what can we do to cut that back, you know? 50% because a lot of people feel that I've run into that they have to have something on every wall, every little knickknack shelf has to have something on it. And that's not true at all. Um, people yep. need uh, some breathing room and some mental, like to kind of take in the house more because we're not trying to sell your stuff to buyers. We're trying to sell your home. And like the worst thing you want is someone to leave your house and be like, I don't even remember what I saw. All I remember is the Hawkeye room or all I remember is- Which I have that happen often. All. Like, and that 100% happens. Yeah. Um, and a lot of houses kind of tend like, let's say you're like in a neighborhood in Ankeny that a lot of homes are for sale. Like people will start running them together and be like, I don't even remember the master bedroom in that house because I was so caught up with all the photos on the wall. 
And so my job is to what can we do to depersonalize your home, um, knowing that I'm not trying to like rip your house apart. I'm trying to help you sell your house because believe me, I want your house to sell just as much as Ethan does. Um, I'm referral based. Ethan's referral based. So we're all in this together, 100%. Um, Faster it sells and, and for the best dollar, the better it is for everybody. 100%. And another thing too, that I think really helps people kind of detach themselves from their house is as soon as you decide to list it, it's really not your house anymore. I'm going to be honest, it's a product. And so if you kind of think of it as your house is the marketing, like in how do we, your house is the product and how do we market it the best? So me coming in and saying like, okay, we have to get rid of family photos. We have to like remove one sofa from this room because it's crowded. Um, I don't care for um, the purple wall, not taking that personally and just realize I'm trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. The less days on the market, the better for everybody. So yeah, um, thing I think that uh, some people realize or don't realize is well, I think when you go in and say stuff like, hey, I think you should change this, or even when I do that, it's not saying we don't even necessarily like it. We're just saying to hit the biggest buyer pool and to attract the most people, this is how it should be, or this is what we yeah. recommend. A hundred percent. And I, like, for example, in my own, I mean, look at this giant cat painting I have. This is, like, <laughs> this is in my awesome. dining room. And like, I mean, it's probably not appropriate if I was to list it, but I love it, but I would probably remove it and put something more neutral because it's hot pink. And then I have like a lime green area rug in my living room. So just knowing yep. that we're all, there's just s subtle things you can do to just kind of neutralize your home, make it more attractive to a wider base of people. Um, Cause everybody decorates different. Everybody has different tastes. So how do we like I hate the word dumb it down, but literally dumb it down so people feel more comfortable in your space and not are overwhelmed with anything. And we don't have any roadblocks um, decor wise or furniture wise that would make them not want to walk into your house. So, or yeah, I guess true. at this point, ask for more information or whatever. So, yeah. um, so let's hit on a. Let's yeah. hit on family photos. Yeah. Uh, um, I want your opinion on yes, no, a few is okay. Take all of them down, leave them up. What is your professional opinion on family photos and in a yeah. home you're trying to sell? Yeah. So family photos are always, always usually come up. Um, here's the thing. So we're all natural voyeurs. Like we all, especially it's Des Moines. Like, I feel like everybody knows somebody yeah. You're looking at photo. Like if you have a bunch of photos, let's say in your entry or your stairway, people are going to look at them. Like they're going to walk up the stairs and they're going to be like, Oh, I wonder um, what their kids' names are. Or like where they go to school or how old they are now, or gosh, um, that's a really pretty photo of her grandparents. Like when they got married, like it, 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 we just naturally do that as humans. We can't, help ourselves. Like it's weird if you saw a photo and you didn't look at it. And so my idea is like, let's just avoid that. Like we, it's not necessary. Um, we don't need pictures on the stairway up the stairs for staging. I would never do that in a, um, a vacant stage. Let's say if you have a bunch of photos of your family, like behind your sofa, which is usually a common place. Yeah. Um, some of them might be like newer, some of them might be older. They might be different styles of photography because a lot of families don't get the luxury of using the same photographer All the time. throughout their whole 20 years, okay? So my one idea that I will come up as like a happy medium or uh, a cheat if maybe the photos are really beautiful and like they're more, um, let's say like artsy looking or larger format is to turn them all black and white. Um, that way they all look similar and it's not like a bunch yeah. of different styles of photography yeah. on the wall because some photographers shoot more high contrast. Some of them shoot more dialed down. And so then that way, if they're all just black and white, they kind of neutralize themselves and then they kind of look more like a piece of artwork. Um, so that's one cheat, okay. but 
otherwise I'm usually like, you got to get rid of them. Um, I'd rather have nothing on the wall than like seven different styles of photography and different sizes of photos. And it's nothing personal. It's just what it is. So. Perfect. Um, so then, yeah, no, I appreciate all that. That's great. I uh, love that you hit on the colors thing. Um, what are, so people right now are watching this <clears throat> or watching in the future on our Facebook page and they're thinking, Hey, we're, we're going to be listing sometime in 2020. Mm -hmm. Can you give three or four, just however many you want, um, mm -hmm. kind of tips or things that they should be doing now to their yeah. home to kind of prepare for that? So one thing, um, I'll kind of walk through some of the tips like that I think are really important that tend to take longer than like a week turnover, you yeah. know, sometimes I get a call like, Hey, we're trying to list this house in a week. Can you come over and tell them what they do? And like, obviously we're limited on the amount of things that we can do. Yeah. Um, but let's say if someone's like, we want to list this late summer, um, or this fall, what can, can you come over? We know the house needs work. What can we do? That would be a return on investment because there's nothing worse than like putting all this money into something and then you don't get it back. And so my job is to kind of come in and educate on like, these are the simple things that you can do to help um, upsell your home. But I don't want, it's like, then it's like, where do you start and stop? Cause you, you don't want to like completely renovate the whole house. entire house. Yeah. yeah. So like one thing is that I hear a lot is Oak. Um, I think we've actually worked on a deal <laughs> together. Yeah. Um, yellow oak and that's obviously something that a lot of people get nervous about or have really strong feelings about um, I've walked into homes where they absolutely it's been on the market let's say even a house that's been on the market for 45 days and their roadblock is the oak but they feel strongly that they like it um, what can I do to convince them like maybe if we just painted the staircase um, maybe if we just painted the kitchen cabinets to show the impact that painting the oak would make without having to do all the trim, all the baseboards, all the doors, because it kind of gets into a slippery slope of like, am I trying to spend 12 grand in here? Or am I trying to spend 2000? Yeah. Um, another thing too is on, on that note is painting. Um, a lot of people when they've lived in their home for a long time, I've noticed like have every room's a different color. Um, that's not ideal. Um, painting is kind of the most annoying thing to do, but the easiest thing to do at the same time, yeah. um, because it's something that most people you can do and you can do yourself. Do. Yeah. So I, if I walked into a house and there is a blue bedroom, a red bedroom, a tan bedroom, the kitchen was, orange and the living room was blue i'd be like you got to repaint all this and just do a nice warm white um and if they put their hands up and they're like no well we don't really want to paint everything so what's my absolute and i would say first impression so entry kitchen main living um now obviously i want obviously painting because a lot of people are like, well, they can paint their own color. They're probably just going to paint it anyway. I'm like, no, that's not, that's not true. Um, people don't want projects. And the one thing that TV shows have kind of killed <laughs> or created this like rom romanticizing home projects is not true. People not every, Everybody can see how it can look updated, which is not yeah. the case most people, people cannot don't want like and people just don't have the time i guess it, ex with the exception now like people don't spend a lot of time in their homes and when they're in there like they're doing other things either with their children or other things that they the just thing. the last thing they want to do is paint yeah. so if we can remove that roadblock from them and not and know that we don't have to paint this whole house that's going to help you in the long run and you'll 100 percent get that return on investment back like without question um and people are like well all one color that's crazy i'm like no all the rooms should be a warm white depending on the woodwork now there's lots of different whites like i'll recommend a different white for white trim than i would recommend a different white for honey oak or a dark stain like there's so many different whites but 100 percent neutralize your walls 
The other thing that's a really um, easy thing to do anymore that's cost effective is changing out lighting. Um, because of websites like Wayfair and build.com and even, you know, Home Depot or whatever, Lowe's, you can really, you can change out a dining room light in your house for less than $200. Um, it could be a huge impact. Lighting is kind of my favorite thing. Um, oh, I should say it is my favorite thing um, because you can, lighting really tells the story and really helps kind of like a sizzle feature. I don't know if that makes sense, but if someone, if a woman walked into a house and she loved the dining room light, I guarantee even if there was something about the house that she didn't like, let's say like maybe the master bathroom was smaller than she hoped, she's probably going to go and want to buy that house um, just because of a light that is actually easier to change out than the size of the bedroom. I don't know. It's kind of like this mental thing. So we're yeah, a mental like thing. And I tell people that all the time, like yeah. a lot of people are, well, the people are just going to want to change the paint or people are just going to want to change out the flooring. But <clears throat> to me, people get a, buying a home is very much a feeling type thing. Yeah. And so if you have paint or if they don't have that feeling that they get when they walk in the home, yeah. We have to be excited about something. Yeah, so, and so you gotta, um, yeah, definitely neutralize that. So um, we do have a question here from mm -hmm. Nikki. Um, she just said, "What are some tips for making small pay, uh, small spaces or small houses look larger?" Um, okay, so I would say there's a couple different ways to do that. So small spaces, obviously lighter paint colors are key, lighter floor coverings. Um, so if it's like a carpeted room, but it has older dark carpet, like changing out the carpet to a lighter carpet or a lighter LVP definitely will help um, lightening the paint color. Um, in bedrooms, like if you have a small bedroom, dropping like a nightstand or dropping a king bed into a queen size helps or losing a dresser because um, sometimes we just tend to have more furniture um, living wise than we do when we want to stage it so sometimes we have to make a, 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 a some sacrifices as far as like rid of some clothes for a while in order yeah. to cut like, down thing too is like it's obviously seasonal like obviously you're, you're, you want to move. Okay. You're hundred percent going to move Ment mentally. You need to think that way. Like I am going to be moving out of this house. So there's nothing wrong with like starting to pack up things in your house that you don't use on a every other week basis. If you're not so, planning to use it in the next seat or in that season, you might as well pack her up. Pack it up. So get the Christmas stuff out of your, like out of your house or get it in storage. Um, get, um, all the winter clothes out of your house um, or down in like a basement area that people won't focus on. Um, donate stuff. Like if you're not planning on taking items to your new house, donate or sell it. Um, most of the time, like there's nothing that like irks me more when, and everybody has this room and I've been guilty from it from before, but the room with all the forgotten furniture. <laughs> so yeah. It's like either in the basement or it's like in um, a spare bedroom and it's like hand-me-downs from like your parents or like maybe when you and your husband, you know, moved in together, you have his like weird college dorm chair and then like a bed that barely, sh it shouldn't even be in your house anymore. Now is the time to get rid of that. Like don't, if it looks like, a room that you don't care about, it's gonna 100% look like that to your buyer or potential buyer. So just get rid of it. I'd rather have the room be empty than have like four random things in it that don't go together. Just no. That was me on my la our last house that we just moved into. I'd moved my first bedroom set I ever bought when I was like 20 years old. When I moved to Tennessee, it had gone through probably like eight or nine moves yeah I just couldn't get rid of it but this last time i was like you know what we have a roll-off dumpster we're not even gonna move this into the house this time it's going yeah. into the not going in yeah. yeah i think that's really important um yeah no, a lot of people's basements 
and there's always the basement room and then there's always like this guest room that has like a hodgepodge and like I would rather it be the empty room, the toy room the yep. extra closet it's the mm -hmm. yeah empty is better <laughs> yes that helps I don't know there's a lot of different scenarios obviously of why the room looks small but obviously lighter colors <clears throat> better lighting Light colors obviously less furniture Less um, curtains, like if the curtains are yeah. dark, remove the curtains, stuff like that. That's good. Um, anything else that you really want to hit on? One, on one more thing that you have that if people want to be doing stuff to their home, or um, if you're good, we'll kind of we can move on to. But I think that's probably you know we kind of touched on a lot of things. Obviously, like I would because cleaning is kind of like I'm talking deep clean like baseboard stuff like that stuff really matters um clean even like using a white eraser magic eraser on you know your light switches and trim makes a huge yeah. difference another thing too that people don't think about and I know you as a agent Ethan will appreciate this is getting your windows cleaned on the outside um yep. especially after a winter months especially in Iowa um, it just makes a huge difference not having to see dust and it just will brighten up your home and it's such an easy thing to hire out and it's really not that expensive and it's definitely would be worth the investment on that is getting your exterior windows clean that's good i appreciate that too yeah clean windows is always a good thing the more light you can let in your home screen. don't forget your screens don't forget the screen. <laughs> yes. Um, well, no, well, we appreciate that. Um, all, yeah, Jessica's going to stay on here throughout. We're going to move on from this, but uh, towards the end of this, we will kind of go back and forth with her. Some of the stuff she's mentioned about baseboards and that stuff we'll kind of hit on again here shortly too, but um, a lot of great information. Um, once again, if you guys have any questions for myself or Jessica, definitely put them in the chat um on facebook live there and uh we'll get to those whenever you ask them and i'll be watching it and so will she so we can always go back and retouch on something so even if it's something i'm not talking about at that current time feel free to ask it and so we can get that um yeah get your questions answered there's jessica's contact info too take a screenshot of that um and yeah reach out to her if you have any questions um, we are not trying to, we're not trying to pitch anybody on, when I bring these vendors on, we're not trying to pitch anybody to necessarily use them, but more just helpful tips and tricks. Obviously, they are professionals like myself. So if you have any questions, uh, she does, um, she'll do consultations and stuff like that. You can reach out to her uh, for any additional information to set up uh, virtual consultations, staging consults, stuff like that as well. So, um, so now we just want to talk about the state of the market. So what is going on in our local market um, across the country, stuff like that with selling and buying right now? Um, it's a big question I get all the time. And most of the time it's, oh, you guys must be slowing down. I'm assuming this has put a stop to the real estate market, um, so on, so on. Um, you would be, we've actually, we, got, we went over this slide not long ago, um, actually with the first one we did. But what is, a re, I mean, a recession, we're definitely, heading towards a recession um, but that does not mean a or we're in the middle of recession that does not necessarily mean we're heading towards a housing crisis as you can see here actually um, three of the last five recessions we've actually hit uh, we've actually homes have appreciated during those times um, so you're up <clears throat> first one 6.1 3.5 and then the fourth or the third one actually only was down 1.9 percent which is not even much at all and then back in 2001, it was up 6.6. .6. And then obviously 2008, uh, home price changes went down almost 20%. Um, that one is different in the fashion that the housing market is actually one reason that that actually, what 2008 happened. So that's a kind of whole different scenario. It's on its own level um, there. But just know a recession does not mean a housing crisis. So it doesn't mean if you list and sell your home right now, you're going to lose 20% on your home. Um, and so we see prices that are continually rising um, and whatnot across, uh, not just here, but across the country when we're talking to other agents too, um, in different uh, parts of the world or yeah, world and uh, the United States. 
So what impact might COVID um, have on home values? The one thing we look at as agents is the month supply of homes in the area. And so we want to know if we put your home on the market, what you're competing with, the uh, absorption rate, what, how fast homes are selling. Um, if no other homes came on the market, how fast would it take or how fast would we sell out of all the inventory we have? So we typically say a normal market, which is a balance between buyers and sellers, you're at a six, about a six month supply of homes, <clears throat> excuse me, is considered a balanced market. So a balance between buyers and sellers. At the end of the last week in our MLS, we had a supply, the average was 1.8 months, um, which has actually been down there that way uh, for the last couple of few years, but things are not changing. I mean, stuff that's still coming on the market is selling pretty quick. Um, there's some price points, the higher end price points that obviously you're not in that 1.8 month supply of, but um, yeah, I mean, that's your month supply of homes. That means if nothing else came on the market, um, in most price points, it would say the average would be everything would sell and under right at two months, which is kind of crazy to think about. We're in the middle of a pandemic and things are still selling. So we have not much inventory um, on the market. Um, all the experts, um, so this graph just shows um, a lot of the financial institutions are calling for a V-shaped recovery. So people believe and uh, the experts out there believe that this isn't going to be like a lingering, like it's going to take, uh, you know, the, the worst kind of climbs where it's not like super straight up, but it's like progressive incline for ever and ever and ever ends. Um, they don't think that's going to happen. I mean, that everyone thinks that quarter two obviously will be down because of this, um, but then the economy will do it, will bounce back in quarter three and quarter four. And so obviously things can change and no one really knows what the future holds. Um, but that's what everybody, all the economists are saying, uh, the big financial institutions there. So like always, headlines can be scary. Uh, news, uh, all the media, they try to make things sound as scary to sucker you in as much as they can. Nothing against them, but uh, that's kind of their job. But um, if you ever have any questions on that, what's going on, definitely reach out to us and we can give you a more up-to-date uh, insight look, inside look at your, uh, your market there. I did a video on this a couple of days ago, but if you didn't see it, um, another great news for sellers is buyer activity is back up. So this is going back from the first day of January, where we were at the beginning of the year. This, so showing time is what us agents, we um, put showing, that's what we request all of our showings on. So when we go out and show buyers homes, we request showings through showing time. <clears throat> they, have this week, uh, they have this data that you can pull and this shows the activity of buyers going to look at homes right now. The, yeah, so the yellow, the gold is this year, the blue is last year. As you can see, we had a peak um, right at the beginning of March, actually right before all this happened, of showing. So that was the top of where we were, the number of showings um, compared to the beginning of the year. So that was our peak. We dropped back down to and just below where we were at the very beginning of the year with showings. So stuff definitely did go back down. Um, but as you can see now, showings are actually back up and we're only down 4.8. So down just under 5% from where we were last year at this time. So only 5% down when we're in the middle of a pandemic and um, with people looking at homes is pretty phenomenal to say the least. But so over, um, yeah, pretty much from uh, March 30th. So in the month of April, we have gone <clears throat> up nearly, I mean, almost 60%, 51.1% uh, increase, which is pretty crazy to think about. So what does that mean to you if you're thinking about selling your home? Uh, that just means that buyers are yeah, out there looking for homes. They're not uh, worried about that, whether they're actually walking through homes or if they're having agents go do video tours of homes. Either way, people are wanting to get in and look at homes and start uh, making a move. I do think that school actually, so big, a lot of times people wait for school to be out until they can, uh, so they can, until they go start looking for homes and make them move. With school actually closing, I think that could have an impact on why you see this tick up in showings um, in, in the last week or so, just with schools canceling, obviously, uh, for the rest of the year there. But um, home prices are expected to remain steady, um, so they just they believe home uh, prices will continue to stay steady, if not rise. Um, some people believe they will fall a little bit, but uh, most all the data shows that 
it will continue to stay steady or rise as far as home values go, which is great news for sellers. The other great news for, um, thanks everybody who's tuning in. Um, the other great news for sellers is the inventory is uh, low. Um, so right now, like we went over earlier, uh, the month supply of homes being at 1.8 as an average, a 1.8 month supply is super low compared to a, what you would say a balanced market is buyer to seller, which is six months. And so obviously basic economics, uh, low supply, high demand um, with the showings that are the showing, number of showings increasing um, definitely makes um, great for increased values of your home there. So, and then, yeah, the buyer choice, I mean, the choices right now of homes for people to buy is pretty minimal. Um, and so people are out there looking, people do want to move if they have jobs and they can afford to, they want to make sure that um, they want to get into stuff right now. And so um, we have a lot of stuff going under contract um, ourselves. And then as you'll see here shortly, just the number of pendings in our MLS right now is um, quite crazy there, but inventory is low in most all the price points, uh, which is great for you if you're looking to sell your home. Local market update. So the Des Moines MLS has 3,376 um, active listings on the market um, as of today, and which is, we've been around that number for quite some time, but so since Mar or since the beginning of the whole kind of social distancing, quarantine stuff, um, there's been 1,238 listed properties since then. So stuff still going on the market. What you'll see next is the crazy thing. So under contracts, that means homes that have, uh, that are went pending. So offers were written and accepted on those 1,848. So that's over 600 more homes have gone under contract than were listed. Um, we went into this thing with the shortage of homes, um, and we are going to come out of this, I believe, even with a more shortage, uh, more short supply of homes, which could, which could cause a bottleneck. And I mean, if you're looking to sell, when you come out of this thing, there's going to be, I mean, yeah, the demand's showing right now that the demand is still there, but you're going to be in less of a supply, which is um, good for your value. People have less to choose from and um, can increase your value there. 1,579 closed deals and then uh, 299 canceled. So there are sellers and I've had sellers who have pulled their home off the market during this time just because they don't feel comfortable with people walking through their, your, through their home. Um, and so, yeah, hear me say this, that now uh, a lot of the data will show now is a great time to sell, but it does not mean that now is the time, right time for you to sell. Everybody has a different situation. We understand that. We just want to present you with data <clears throat> and um, show you kind of what's going on out there. But um, yeah, I mean, it's not a lighthearted situation with what's going on. You may not want people walking through your home during this time, even if it means you can make five to 10 grand more. So we completely understand that um, and whatnot. So just hear us on that. We're not trying to tell you to go out and list your home right now, no matter what. Um, but it is uh, with where we're headed in the marketplace, it could be a good time if you are, um, if you're in a situation where you want to sell. Um, one other thing I was going to. Yeah, so second week in a row, pending sales are on the rise. Um, you guys can read over there. Um, we're continuing to do, the other thing I didn't hit on earlier on is right now we're doing a lot of virtual open houses. So each week we're doing about one to two virtual open houses. Just um, I'm coming over, I'm, I'm taking my phone, my gimbal. We're doing tours of the home. People are tuning in. I mean, we're getting hundreds of views on these things and people are at home. They're just watching them from their couch. And so we're at, it's actually been great that we can get a, that much exposure on your home, um, which typically we just open, we're just at an open house. People have to come there to see the home. Now we're getting hundreds of views just by, um, in an hour just by touring your home and doing a virtual open house. So that's other things we're doing to make sure you're not having 10, 20 people actually just walking through your home, touching all your stuff. We're doing virtual open houses that are helping with that as well too. So, um, so that's the local market update. If anybody has any questions on that, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Um, obviously that's a overall um, glimpse of the local markets, which is the Des Moines 
um, MLS, and this doesn't hit into Ames at all, but the Ames market is very similar. Things are coming and going very fast in the Ames market as well um, on that aspect of things. Uh, so what can you do to get your house ready to sell? Um, which a big question. Uh, Jessica hit on this earlier. We talked about, I had her chime in from her professional opinion and I'll kind of relay back to her on some of this stuff as well. But obviously we're stuck at home, um, most of us. And uh, we have maybe a little bit more time on our hands. We're not having kids activities, uh, school activities, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you're thinking of selling in the next, even the next 12 months, stuff that you can be doing now versus, um, or now, to get yourself ready to sell soon, to sell in the future, or even if you're a couple of years out, things you can be doing. So, um, so this is what Jessica hit on earlier. So clean beyond the basics. A lot of people think when we think about cleaning, uh, we think about just the, um, we think about just cleaning the cabinets and the, Jessica, you're muted too, just so you know. Um, just the, yeah, I mean, people just think about the countertops, uh, vacuuming the floors and dusting the bookshelves or stuff like that. But um, when we talk about cleaning, I mean, we're talking about, yeah, wiping down all the baseboards, like Jessica said earlier, taking magic erasers to things, um, wiping off scuff marks. Um, what other things for deep cleaning? Um, I mean, like cleaning your, I think people don't clean their floors yeah, like actually scrub your floors like not even like, like a swiffer super like actually. Stuff around and then clean them i guess like pick up if there's like a council table on the floor like clean underneath of it um like in a bedroom like it's just not picking up like you gotta clean like underneath yeah. your bed i mean like people notice all these things like especially in bathrooms like if you have a vanity that is not all the way to the floor or um, cleaning like the soap scum off if you have a glass door. I mean, yep. it's things that we kind of like mull over as homeowners. Like we just don't even, we get so complacent about it. And then like when someone else looks at it, they're like, oh, oh my gosh, like, oh. Another yep. thing too um, about this lighting thing is nothing drives me more nuts when i walk into a home and like light every, every light bulb's different yeah. <laughs> and i understand how that happens because like a light bulb goes out and we just replace it with whatever we have available so yeah. one just easy trick to do is like especially like vanity lights um flesh mounts and fan lights i would 100 percent rather just them to be clear crystal clear, warm light bulbs. I cannot stand the blue lights, um, the daylight. Like it feels like Walmart or like you're in a department store and it's just kind of like looming over you. And you're like, why do I look so gray? I mean, the, the clear bulbs are definitely where to go. And it's just like, go around your house, count all the ones that aren't clear or all the ones that are out like even can lights i mean if i'm sorry if it's like a high ceiling and you're missing a can light you gotta figure out how to how to get that thing yeah so yeah, yeah no, that's you so, i mean that's a that's huge, a huge issue too. big thing for me too and a lot of people will mix edison bulbs with oh. uh bright led lights <laughs> it's two completely and they're like right by each other. So yeah. that's something I was gonna yeah, hit on too. So I appreciate you do it. Yeah, do it. like Edison bulbs are cool looking, but they are not at all worth it to me. Um, and they make, uh, so we put some in our new house that are, they kind of look like Edison one. bulbs, but they're like, a, they're not, they're like a warm white. They're not a yeah. brown of whatever color you want to call them. Yeah. And like they're more like they're not they're more for look they're not for a function so i would never recommend having you edison right in your bulbs. house up very well with no like i wouldn't put them in your kitchen pendants because like what is that it's just providing this weird glow that doesn't make sense so i'd just rather it be a clear bulb for sure no thanks for thanks for that um other things to be doing yeah just organizing spaces so cleaning out and organizing closets uh, I know Jessica Miller, who's an agent here in our office, uh, used to be on our team, 
she's been doing that a ton um, as far as I just see it on her uh, Instagram and stuff. So just cleaning and reorganizing space, making space look bigger by doing that. Um, tidying up your entryway and clean your doormat. So taking a power washer and really cleaning those things off. Um, first impressions, everything. So as people walk up to your entryway, um, it's the first thing they see. Um, on that note too, um, even like painting around your front door, painting. I think we're having technical difficulties. Oh, hey, still there. I'm here. All right. I put the video back on. I felt weird all by myself. I know. I have no hey. idea. <laughs> Just disconnected me. Well, sorry for those that are watching on Facebook. I, hopefully, I'm still live on there. I don't know why I got kicked off. Oh, you <clears throat> hit yourself. We are back. Um, okay. So, anyway, back to this. So uh, what else you can be doing to prepare um, to sell later right now too during this time? Uh, just freshen up walls. Obviously, we already talked about a lot of this stuff. Um, talked about, yeah, touching up interior wall paint, neutralizing your wall colors, uh, going with those warm whites, uh, neutral colors. There, getting ready to the, what colors did you say? Red, orange, green? Red, orange, yellow. Okay. Um, so trying to get rid of some of those colors throughout rooms um, and yeah paint pretty cheap if you can do it yourself too to be able to paint some walls is, um, just an afternoon to be able to do that um, dig into your kitchen so just clean out organized pantry I'm wiping down all your cabinets um, obviously when we're cleaning we have dirty hands most of the time or as we're cooking we have dirty hands most of the time so touching cabinets they get gross and just food and grease and stuff like that so wiping down those and then deep clean appliances um, as well. So um, wiping off, obviously, if you have kids, wiping down your stainless steel appliances only lasts you about uh, 10 minutes <laughs> before they come in and destroy them again, but uh, clean out the inside of them and whatnot, because buyers do look inside fridges and they'll open freezers sometimes too. So, um, and then just tidying up your yard. So sweeping off, we talked about uh, power washing, taking a power washer to your sidewalks, your, because once again, curb appeal, and first impression is everything. Uh, power wash and siding. Um, a lot of times the north side of your house will get um, just fungus and mold and mildew and stuff building up on it just because it doesn't get much sun. And so just taking a power washer and power washing that stuff off to give a good curb appeal and first impression 
um, right now is a fantastic time to start doing some landscaping too. And so getting that landscaping done now compared to in July when it's 99 degrees outside is a great idea, I would say. Um, and you can still, I know Lowe's, Home Depot and stuff like that are still open. You can go there. Um, I'm assuming they would, they probably deliver stuff like that too. I do not know the answer to that. I don't know if Jessica, if you know anything about landscaping, but, um, on that, but I know if you go to Lowe's or any nursery and stuff, obviously it's outside and you can make sure you keep your distance, but getting, um, stuff like that done now compared to when it's hundred degrees outside is best for you and will look nice when you go to sell your house as well. I'm getting outdoor patio furniture out and installed, uh, or not installed, but put up is um, right now is a good time. Being able to, a lot of people don't think about staging their outdoor space, but if you have a nice outdoor space, um, having that staged as well definitely helps um, and gives people the, gives them a feeling of, oh, I'm not just gonna, this isn't just a deck that I'm gonna never go out on. This is a deck that I can actually see us entertaining in. We can go sit out here in the evenings and drink a beer, drink wine, we can drink coffee out here, um, stuff like that. So getting that stuff all set up um, there as well um, during this time. So yeah, that is, we're almost at an hour now. Um, Jessica, any final, so we, yeah, once again, Jessica with Jessica Ray Interiors uh, does home staging. Um, she helps with, yeah, I mean, consult does uh, staging consultations, all that kind of stuff for sellers, people who are thinking about selling their home. Um, or if you're not even thinking about selling, but just want to freshen things up a little bit, I'm sure she can help with that as well. Yep. And uh, hopefully people got um, some good information out of this. If you have any questions, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to myself um, or Jessica. You can follow her on Instagram and Facebook, Jessica Ray Interiors. So Jessica, any last any two cents you want to throw in at the end? Um, I think just know that it's okay to ask questions um, to your agent. Um, they're going to be honest with you. Um, there's no stupid question on like what should be done or, you know, doesn't need to be done. Um, also just know that whatever they're telling you, it's for everybody's best interest. I would say like, it's nothing. Yeah, we're not trying to be rude or be no. mean when we're telling you to. Like I said, like we want your house to sell just as badly <laughs> as you do. So obviously a good experience translates um, well for us. So just know that whatever we're saying and, you know, we, we try to do with with, with much grace as possible, but yes. just know that like we're trying our best to get your house sold. So, um, and every situation is different. Every home's different, but there's definitely like the general rules of staging and then, you know, providing like a customized list for people. Definitely, it's not going to hurt anybody to get your home ready. So um, being a savvy seller definitely will put you ahead of a lot of the other people on the market, I think. So it's definitely worth it. Yeah, no, I, um, yeah, appreciate that. And like I said, it was Great having you on. Definitely a lot of great Thank tips. You for having me. It was a lot of fun and very educational. Yeah. <laughs> glad, uh, glad you were able to do it. If you guys have any questions, um, here's how you can contact us. If you, I'm going to go back to get Jessica's information up on here too, but feel free, free to screenshot this. Um, also make sure you check out our blog we've been doing. So this, this video will actually go up on a blog that we'll have um, posted up there as well. And uh, we have lots of other blogs that we've been posting about just the market. And then a lot of stuff that's not even real estate related, just things to do during this time with the kids. Um, what, yeah, different resources as far as financial resources that the government's giving, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jamie has been doing a fantastic job of putting those blogs out there. Um, but once again, appreciate everybody chiming in here. I'm gonna go back to, uh, here's Jessica's information here. I'll leave this up. And then once again, yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, you are thinking about selling possibly, or even if it's not this year, but even next year or whatnot, but you have time now to start doing things, uh, definitely reach out to me. I'm happy to do a virtual tour of your home. Um, definitely happy to come over, check your home out as well. We'll take precautions, obviously, and let you know what you can be doing now 
to get um, top dollar for your home when you do do sell that. So um, once again, thank you very much, Jessica. Appreciate you. And, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. So take care. Have a great day.